Hey everyone, I'm out here at the Talkman House, one of Wilsonville's oldest and most historical buildings. But not only is it a historical place for the city of Wilsonville, it's also a historical place for me because it's the place I first came to a Creekside event. When I was interviewing, being interviewed for the youth pastor role at our church, I came out here to a youth group so that youth ministry volunteers and youth kids could get a feel for me and I in turn could see what the youth group was all about. This place kind of has special significance for those of us that remember a youth group out here. And One of the things that would always happen is that after the regular program was done, you know like kids play a game and then eat gross stuff, a little bit of music, small sermon, after all of that kids would go out back on uh, sunny days or on cold days would find a little corner or kind of small area to do groups. Very small groups of kids would get together and they would talk about what was important from the sermon, what was going on in their lives and all of those things. I thought that that made this an appropriate place to shoot a video talking about our upcoming small groups. When I think about important groups and how they've impacted people that I know's lives, I think oftentimes about youth groups or young adult groups, really young people. And it seems like in young people's lives there is great success in groups. And I can't help but wonder if it's because those groups kind of look like what we're going to launch in September. They're small groups of gender specific people that get together and focus on specific areas of growth. The kids that were part of those small groups were really impacted. I've seen kids in what Young Life calls campaigners be really impacted. These types of groups are really important to people, but what's interesting about them is that sometimes, most of the time I guess, those types of small groups go away as we get older. About a year and a half ago, I started to ask the question, what's next in small groups? Like, where do we go from here? For several years, when I became the pastor, we ran what we called connect groups. And at the heart of connect groups was connection. When I took over as pastor, we were a very small church and we were also a very segregated church. We were segregated primarily by our ages. There was a bunch of high school kids, there was a bunch of young adults, and then there was a bunch of older adults. But within those groups, um, there wasn't a lot of connection or overlap. People that were older didn't really know younger people, and people that were, you know, kind of in the middle didn't know those on either side of them. And so when we launched Connect Groups, the, the whole goal was, was that people would begin to connect in spiritually important ways. We kind of designed them in order that, that people would learn, take the first steps in investing in each other's spiritual lives. As you know, about a, a year ago, we, we stopped doing those, but before that, I was, I was really asking, well, what's next? Like I said, in these groups. And as a part of that, I was introduced to a man that used to be the director of groups at a large church just outside of Wilson. And I sat with this man and we talked for a long time and, and he told me that at their church they had three things going on. He said, one, they have their old home groups that have been going on forever. These are groups with uh, both men and women that vary in size, vary in topic, they study a book or whatever it might be. And, and those have been going on a long time at their church. And then they had uh, both male and female small groups that kind of fit uh, the same mold, the same mindset, but were gender specific. And then he said near the end of our conversation, we have this other thing that we're calling triads. And triads are groups of three people that are the same gender that are getting together and and really focusing on helping each other in their in spiritual progress and things like that. And as soon as he said it, something clicked in me and I said, 
that seems to be important. That seems like what I witnessed out here at the Talkman House and what I've seen in other groups of young people that are really trying to grow in their spiritual lives. That idea kind of bounced around in my head for a little while. What would it be like to have gender-specific groups that are really small in our church? And uh, because it was bouncing around so much, I found myself talking about it. And one of the people that I talked about it with was another pastor who was in charge of small groups at a very large church in Wilsonville. And I told him, you know, I'd like to get to this this triad thing, this this groups of three, gender specific. And he looked at me and he said, you know, that's what we want to have happen in our church. But because we're so large and because we've done groups for so long, that's something we're aiming for, but not something we can get to overnight. And as soon as he said that, I thought, wow, what a unique opportunity we have where we have a clean slate as far as small groups go and we have the opportunity to do frankly whatever we want and whatever we think is best for the spiritual health of the people in our church and so this fall we are launching in september our new small groups and what's going to be the most noticeable difference about them is that they are going to be like i said very small groups of three or four people, and they are going to be gender specific. There's a couple of reasons that these things are important, according to the pastors that I've talked to and according to a, a key book that really has pushed this idea of triads. And one of the key issues is that in groups of three or four, you find that everybody must engage. Have you ever sat at a table, dinner or coffee or whatever with, you know, just a few people? It seems like everybody is involved in the conversation. It seems like everybody is talking, everybody is engaged. But at the same time, if you've ever sat at a table with 10 to 15 people, maybe more, you quickly find that some people do most of the talking while other people kind of sit there, the introverts, right? They just sit there and, and I'm sure they're enjoying themselves, but, but they don't say as much. When you have a very small group of people, it creates intimacy and it creates engagement. And that's the main reason that we've decided to make really small groups. Now, the gender specific thing I know uh, is, is something that's a little abnormal for people over the age of, you know, like 20 years old. But what I've seen what it seems like other people have discovered is that when men get together with men and women get together with women, the conversation is, is frankly just freer and it goes into places that, that many people aren't comfortable going into when they have people of the opposite gender with them. Now that's one of the main reasons, but also People in our church for a while now have been clamoring for men and women to get together. And, and so we've heard that clamoring and we put two and two together and, and it just seems like at this time in our church, it's really important for us not only to go smaller in our groups, but also to go gender specific. Now there's another thing that's going to make our, our groups unique. And that is that our groups are going to be focused on several areas of spiritual growth. You've heard us say this if you've been around, but we think that one of the ways that we ought to experience and express God's glory is through personal sanctification, which is the theological fancy term for growing, growing in the Christian life. And so we have looked and decided that there are these key areas of a person's spiritual growth, and each group will be focused on moving people forward in one or more of those areas. We think that this is going to help our groups be really focused. I think we can go into a group type setting in a church and it's really general, it's broad, you know, I'm hoping to grow, but we really, we really never stop to ask how we're going to grow. And in our groups, we're, we're really aiming it at very specific growth areas. This is cool on two fronts. One, it helps you know what group you should join. If there's a specific area that you're looking to develop in, and I know we're not all looking 
to develop in the same areas. We're at different places in our spiritual lives. But if there's a specific area, then you know that's a group that I should get into. Want to be a better dad? We're going to have a group for that. Need to learn how to share your faith more fully? There's a group for that. Curious how to study and read the Bible better? There's a group for that. At the same time, this allows for more people to be group leaders. I think it's a little intimidating to disciple people. I mean, Jesus says that his followers should be making disciples, and most of us fail at doing that at all. And it's probably because we think, man, I need to have it all together. I need to know more than I need to know. I need to be so far down the the road spiritually that I can grab people who are behind me and, and help them move forward. But with this new small group model, it allows for you to have a really specific area that, that you've grown in, and then to grab a few other people and say, hey, let me help you grow in that area too. I said on one of our Sunday mornings recently that if somebody will lead a small group on sharing Jesus, then I'll be in it because I've been really convicted about my willingness to share Jesus with people personally. I do it when I preach, you know that. I do it every Sunday when I preach, but in one-on-one -on -one conversations, I'm really weak and I want to get better. I really do believe that these small, gender-specific, spiritually focused groups are going to be transformational for your spiritual lives, and so I hope that you will get in one. Now, I know that there's a couple other pieces of information that you're going to need in order to join one, and, and the first question you might have is, when do they meet? And one of the cool things about doing groups in this new way is that it allows for some flexibility about meeting, and so each group leader is able to determine when and how frequently they want to meet. Some groups will meet weekly, some groups will meet bi-weekly, and some groups even may meet once a month. The other question you might have is how do you sign up? And the easy way to do that, as with everything in our church, is to go to creekside.me and click on groups. What's really cool about that site and what we've done there is that when you click on groups, you will be taken to a page that will give you a list of every group that is currently open. And if you click on that group, you will be able to see the motto, the topic, and you'll be able to see any, an agenda of what's going to take place in that group. I think that you'll find this extremely helpful in understanding what each group is going to look like, and they're not all going to look the same. And so make sure you go to creekside.me, click on groups, check out the groups that we have available, and if you wanna learn more about each one, just give it a click and see what they are like. Again, I really do hope you'll sign up. Visit creekside.me to do that. I think that we need to return to, to perhaps what we did when we were young, getting together, a few other people talking about the things of Jesus in hopes that we may grow.